Now in World War I, the Germans didn't really field their own tank until March to October 1918 and along trundled this little beastie. This is the German A7V tank. Um, Germans only built 20 of them and when Germans came to tanks they used mainly captured British examples but the Germans built 20 of these A7Vs. Um, main gun at the front was a 57mm and around the body it had six 7.9 um, machine guns and it had a crew of 18 people it could go at nine mile an hour on flat ground on a road it could go three mile an hour across country and the driver sat in the middle on a seat that swiveled around so the tank could either go forwards or if it was in trouble the driver swiveled his seat around and trundled away backwards. So you have two machine guns there, two machine guns there, two machine guns there, and one gun at the front. Um, no specific insignia was introduced for German tank crews, but you may see a badge floating about being offered as a World War I tank badge and it's this badge what this is it's not a world war one german tank badge its proper name is the 1921 german panzer tank commemorative badge 1918 it's a badge that was made for commercial sale in 1921 to First World War German tank crews. German tank crews were not issued with a badge like German tank crews in World War II were issued with a badge. They had to purchase their own badge after World War I as a commemorative piece. That's why you don't see German tank crews wearing this badge in World War I. And probably the most famous wearer of this badge was Sepp Dietrich who wore the badge on his World War II uniform. But in all respects, it's a commemorative badge that the Germans had to purchase. And because it was a private purchase badge, there's different variations in the, the rear of the badge. On the front of the badge, it's stuck in a kind of tomback, or you can get them in white metal, you can get them in plating metal, you can get them in silver as well. But in all respects, the front is exactly the same as this. You have at the top the skull and crossbones, which doesn't mean death. The skull and crossbones, in this instance, is the traditional... Um, German cavalry badge and obviously the tank replaces the cavalry but they keep the skull and crossbones as a traditional badge. In the middle is a representation of the A7V tank kind of gallantly wading its way across rough ground with shells bursting above it. You have this oak leaf surround and the ribbon at the bottom. Now this is where the back is different in each badge. In this badge the back is a mirror image stamping of the front. Now in some instances the badge can be perfectly flat. The badge can have a kind of sun ray effect with a plate across the back. And in this one the hinge is mounted behind the skull. In some of them the hinge can be mounted where the crossbones are at. Or in some where you have flat backs the pin can be mounted from there to there. The clasp is mounted at the bottom where the ribbon is and again there's variation. So there's there's various manufacturers variations in the backs. Sometimes they'll be stamped 0.800 silver and um, sometimes they'll be maker marked, sometimes not. So there's various variations because it was not an issue badge it was a private purchase badge and that's important. So that's the 1921 German Panzer Forces commemorative badge, not a qualification badge. And you won't see one in any World War I photographs. Purely a veteran's private purchase commemorative piece for service in the 
A7V tank 